This morning we're going to be talking about tech debt and the 20% philosophy. And uh, the other day I was uh, speaking with some individuals about um, development in an environment and falling behind. And I've seen this in quite a few environments, not only that I've, I've worked in or I've come into, or just environments in general that you know fellow developers have talked about. Tech debt and the 20% philosophy, they use the term tech debt. And I've, I've heard people talk about you know development debt, um, tech debt, what's the other one, um, DBA debt, if you would. And what they mean is, is that <clears throat> they're spending more time repairing issues and putting band-aids over problems than actually developing long-term solutions. And so there is a philosophy of technology in every firm and how well you stick to that philosophy will determine how well you do in the long run. One of the things that I'm going to point out is especially, and DBAs will all identify with this, and that is that everybody nowadays says DBAs are unnecessary until every single thing breaks and then they need a DBA. Um, DBAs in general, you know you're a good DBA when people say things like, well, DBAs are not a very necessary position. That's a sign that you're doing a good job. That's because people don't understand all of the things that could go wrong. Um, most people, including developers, are they're not DBAs, they're not cut out to be DBAs. They don't realize all of the issues that could happen in an environment. And so they think that it's just an unnecessary position. It's just a position we're paying a lot of money for. What's the point? Well, when everything breaks loose, that's the point. Then they need it. So what ends up happening a lot of times is they try to get DBAs, especially, to do Band-Aid solutions. Hey, can you fix this? Hey, can you fix this? Hey, can you fix this? And they try to pull them onto these other projects and these other tasks that are really in the long, the grand scheme of things, aren't as important as everybody thinks. And the result is, is that the environment begins to fall behind. And as a case in point, let's just put it this way. I'll, I'll use one with MongoDB and then I'll use one with SQL Server. Let's suppose that suddenly our, our queries start taking a long time in Mongo. And it's because what should be done, we should be monitoring the growth of our data. We should be monitoring um, the growth of our indexes. We should be monitoring this. We should be monitoring the active data sets that we're working on. But we're not anymore, right? Because we're trying to fix all these, you know, little bitty tiny solutions. And what ends up happening is we fall behind. It's like borrowing a million dollars and promising, promising ourselves we're going to make $10 million, but we only end up making $250,000. But we still have the million dollars in debt, right? So the result is, is that we don't actually develop solutions in the long run and we begin to fall behind. And as we begin to fall behind, problems occur that really start to drag down the environment. In other words, problems start to begin to compound. We have, we don't, we're not developing solutions that are compounding. The problems are compounding. And I love one of the things that Warren Buffett points out, which is so true, is like the decisions you make today have a lasting impact on your life. And that's true with anything. It's also true with you know tech and your philosophy in tech. If you make good decisions today in development, that's going to compound the effect later down the road. If you make bad decisions, if you just try to you know do quick fixes all the time, then what ends up happening is, is that it's going to compound and later on, it's really going to come back and eat you alive. So one of the, the, the pieces of philosophy that I advocate, advocate I should say, is a 20% rule. You probably have heard in your life that it's a good idea to save 20% of your income, and I think that's a great idea. I mean, like, always save 20% of your income. And that goes back all the way to uh, the book of Genesis, I believe. Um, Joseph spoke with Pharaoh, and Joseph talked about seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, look, let's save 20% uh, in the years of plenty, for the seven years of famine and then we'll be okay. And of course everything was okay and he ended up getting, um, what is it, put in second in command over uh, Egypt. And in fact, there was an article for the Harvard, one of Harvard's publication written about that and they were talking about why why hasn't America been saving 20% of its income? Why why isn't America in a better you know financial position? Have they not read these stories throughout history? So the idea is that the 20% philosophy is that 20% of our time, so let's say we, we work a 50-hour work week, which most of the time we do, so that means 10 hours we are going to be developing solutions for the future. What that means is that when people come and say, hey, we need you to fix this one Band-Aid issue, the answer is no. No, that's not going to happen. 
but we, but we need to. No. And I know, especially in America, it's not, it's not true with other places so much, but outside of America, at least in the United States, people have a hard time saying no. Um, it's a good habit to get into is being able to say no to someone. It's like, that's not going to happen. And there's a reason why. Because if we continue to fall behind, eventually, and I've seen this time and time again, there is a major disaster. You see these companies that have these huge data compromises. A lot of it is not because they have bad developers. It's because their developers know that there's an issue with the data, but they haven't been able to really work on it. They haven't been able to set aside time to work on it because they're fixing all these other issues that eventually when the hacker gets in or eventually when somebody compromises their data, everything melts down. So it's a good idea in development, especially for a DBA, um, even if we're developers, to look at it from a 20% rule. What's the amount of time we're working on? If it's a 40 hour work week, eight hours a week, 50 hour work week, 10 hours a week, we spend developing solutions for the future. And the result of that is it begins to compound. In the long run, we have more time to get future problems solved. And we'll find that our work weeks, by the way, get even shorter and shorter, which means we now have more time to get other things done. It's the same thing with the income. It's the same thing with, with uh, saving in the, the years of plenty. The idea is that with having plenty aside, you can sell that extra plenty. And then in those other years, uh, people will come back and continue to do business with you. The idea is that we're way ahead of the curve instead of falling behind. So 20% of our time should always be invested in future development and future potential issues.